You know, this is a fall classic, it is. What? Apple fritters. But we're doing the adult version. Yeah, you heard me right. We have a secret ingredient that we're gonna put in it, but I'm not gonna tell you. Come on into camp and I'll show you what's happening. Hey, y'all come in here and be real quiet, okay? I want you to look, I've got the evidence. See here? We have a varmint, a creature. So if you see a little mouse scurry by on the way, don't think nothing about it. And we have a mouse dog somewhere. I don't know where he went. Where is the schnauzer? Oh, he is. He's supposed to be trained to catch them critters, but he's on holiday, I guess. But what are we talking about today? Something that I used to go to Miss Holloman's donut shop when I was in the third grade, I'd walk over there. Apple fritters. Now she made them things as a, that big around and for a quarter, you could get one of them and for another quarter you could get some chocolate milk and oh my gosh you talk about something good but i've always wanted to recreate them and maybe have them as an adult version because them things is tasty and they're oh so easy and what apples are in season it is fall i used to could be able to juggle but now i don't i just just try just give it a try i want to see it that's it right yeah, there that's yeah. about as far as it's gonna go i'm gonna keep my day job instead of going to the circus so when you think of apple fritters, and there's so many people, they want to use a Golden Delicious or a Gala apple or something like that. Folks, we need this green apple, which is called a Granny Smith, because it's going to hold up a little better, but also it's got a little tartness, but we're going to combat that with some sugar and some cinnamon, some other spices. So let's just get started. We need to peel these, if the peeler will work. And my grandmother used to take a paring knife and she would go all around an apple and never break the chain. And she'd say, that is how you peel an apple. You might want to introduce our special guest. We do have special guests up here today. We got whiskey, not the kind you drink, whiskey the Doberman, and the Pyrenees Josie. We are so glad that they come to visit us today. And both of them are scared of the schnauzer. I've never figured that deal out. The rest of them are in time out in the pickup over there because there's a lot of angry words being spoken. So this is their property. So we're going to let them stay and be at home. Looky there. I finally made it, Grandma. All one. I did. And I'm going to tell you something. On the ranch, I saved them green apple peelings. I did because we'd make a poor man's apple pie, which is just apple peelings boiled down, get them a little softer, some sugar, some apple cider vinegar, and a pie crust, and a little cornstarch to thicken it. Of butter in this skillet, and we're gonna cook them first, because so many people, they just cut them apples and go ahead and put them right in the batter. No, folks, we got to give them some more flavor. I don't wanna cook them plumb to death, but I do wanna soften them just a little, so, Let's just get them in here. We're gonna let them saute for a little bit in this butter. We're gonna add some goodness to it. Well, been on about three minutes I have. I wanted to saute them there in that butter till you begin to see them to brown a little, and you can. I wanna ask you right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and ask y'all. If you just wandered up to camp and you seen that, wouldn't you think it's fried potatoes? Oh yeah. Yo, making me hungry it is, but I do like a fritter, so we're gonna go on with it. When they begin to brown a little, white sugar, brown sugar. Go ahead and go to mixing that really well. We keep having people trying to jump out of the situation. When you get that mixed up, how many of you remember that old country and western singer, Jerry Lee Lewis? You remember him, Shan? Yes. And what songs did he sing? Do you remember? Um, didn't he sing uh, Chantilly Lace? Uh-huh, no. but there was something else too. He would be pounding that piano and he would sing that song and he'd say. <laughs> Speaking of fire, folks, Remember I told you this was like the adult version of Fritters? Fireball whiskey. Oh. So we got them really coated well with the brown sugar and the cinnamon. You got the little bottle size. Uh-huh, this is what's called travel. Uh-huh, <laughs> so give them a little splashing in here. It's what we would call deglazing the skillet. Now, if y'all are be thinking to yourself, oh, I can't make this, got alcohol in it. Alcohol just cooked out. I like y'all, so we're gonna add a little more, I do. But I just want this to cook down a little bit to where we don't have so much syrup in there, but we're getting all them apples flavored. Our whiskey is about cooked down, it is, but we need to give it a little 
shaking of cinnamon. And look at this good liquid in here. I mean, it is that stuff right there. If you had a hot biscuit, sop that up. Oh, my goodness gracious. So we're going to call these about done. But we can't use them hot, folks. We have to just let them come to room temperature. So I'm going to set them over here and let them cool off. Let's make the batter for it. I don't know. Can I carry it that far? Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, I didn't know it was hot. It is hot. <laughs> don't take long to look at it. Well, let's get started on the dry ingredients for the batter. We have a cup and a half of flour. We're going to add some baking powder because we want it to pop just a tad. A tad bit of salt, which is that much. A little bit of nutmeg, a little dab of cinnamon. Give that a good mixing and stirring up. Now it calls for two large eggs and the Gladys and the girls, they ain't got large eggs. So we're going to go with two mediums to make one large. Go ahead and put them in there. Possums will get that part of it. Don't do that at the house because you'll get in trouble. To that, we're going to add three-fourths cup of sugar. And then we're going to stir really, really well till it is smooth. And you can see them good yellers in there from them homemade chicken eggs. Mm. They be making this stuff extra special. To that, we're going to add some butter. You got to have it. I don't want it hot butter. I just want it melted. Go ahead and stir that up. So just beat it with that whisk, I'd say about two minutes. It'll make everything lighter and smoother as we go along. It's time to put the what? The dry in the wet. Just rake her off in there. But something that would really help it would be some carbonated fluid of some kind because carbonation is going to help things jump up. So what would that be today? So make good old Mountain Dew. Uh -huh. Mountain Dew? Because I just love the flavor it brings. We're going to go with about three-fourths of that cup right there. Just give it a stir. Now, folks, you'll find out. I guess I could do it this way. The camera could see it. You'll find out when you make this, you may have to add a little more flour or a little more Mountain Dew because we want this batter to be where it'll really cling to them apples really well after we get everything mixed in. So don't be afraid if you have to add something. And we'll see that consistency here in just a minute when we get through. But I'm thinking right now would be a good time to fold them apples in there. Because remember, there is a little juice on them apples. So let's go ahead and get all them apples in there. We don't want to lose none of that flavor. And cooking them just brings out so much more flavor than just using them straight in the fritter. Now, when we go to try to fry this, I want it to be able to stay in the spoon so we can rake it down in there. If you're trying to spread that out all over, them apples ain't even going to stay in the batter. So we need something to make it cling a little better. So we're going to incorporate a little more flour till we get it to that desired consistency. While you're mixing this up and getting it to that desired consistency, get you a frying vessel of some what. We're going to use a Dutch oven today. And you can do this in a skillet. Now, you can see that's sort of staying on there, sort of like we want. So we're going to go with that. Yeah, that'll fry okay, up right me, there. Like, so you just want it to like... Want it, I don't want it to run off the spoon. When you pull it up, you can see it tries to separate there just a little. But you want it to be able to just... Well, let me get you a real spoon. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. If we have any. We don't have any tablespoon. For that one. Now you can make fritters to any size you want, but when you pick that up, that's going to be about enough right there. And we want it to be able to run off in that fire. Kind of like a little thinner than peanut butter, maybe? Yeah, a whole lot thicker than pancake batter. Gotcha. So we're pretty close. And the way that you can tell that you got them just the way you want them, if they're too dark, they burn. If they chew it in the middle, they ain't cooked enough. Well, we are ready to fry. We are at 350 degrees. I'll call this a, a shallow fry more than a deep fry. We got about that much oil in there, which is, I'd say, three quarters of an inch. Don't overload the spoon, because we want to be able, when these get in there, sort of give them a little pat to just sort of spread them out just a little. They're going to cook more evenly that way. So get him down in there, spread him out just a tad. Because a fritter, if you go to thinking about it, they're pretty flat. About two to three minutes aside, 
we'll be in the fritter business. But Bertha's burning my leg, Major. You're gonna have to look out, buddy. You know, it's like when you go to cooking pancakes and you see it go to bubbling on the backside coming through, you know, popping up them little air bubbles. That's when you know it's probably pretty close to getting done. Don't, for, don't think that you can't turn them at one time. You can turn them two or three times. I just want them good and golden brown and done in the middle, light and fluffy. Because remember, this is sort of like a donut. And when you're talking about fritters, one of the first fritters that I ever remember eating in my life was a corn fritter. It didn't have all this sweetness and cinnamon in the dough. It was more of a flour and milk mixture with some egg. And then they just put corn in it, like whole corn cut right off the cob, fry it up. Wasn't bad, pretty good eating. Get you through the times when you thought your belly button was rubbing a blister on your backbone. Takes me back to the third grade. Miss Holloman's down there, quarter, pecking on that glass, getting me one of them apple fritters. I want you to look at that. They are oh so pretty. I'm gonna let them cool off just a minute. I wanna go back through this deal. Remember, when you get them in that skillet, you see me sort of spread them out there a little because if you don't, they'll puff up too big and they don't get done in the middle. So try to just give them a little bitty searing across there with a spoon to spread them out and you'd be pretty good. And I didn't come back over here, folks, and got me some powdered sugar and some fireball whiskey and mixed it up. Now, if you don't want to go that route and you don't have to, you can use half and half or you can use milk, something like that. You can even put a little vanilla in there. This is just straight powdered sugar and fireball whiskey. So, Mage, the rest of them are still in timeout. Don't tell them you got a bite. Is that okay? Mage says that'll work. It didn't have no apple in it. Which one? I think it's going to be this one. They should be a little crunch there. You should get the sweetness of the apple, but you should get this icing. Mm. Mm. See here? All them holes in there. That's air. That's fluffy. Mm. You need like a fritter shuffle. First, we're going to... Who brought the apple into the world? Johnny Appleseed. Oh, okay. We're going to do the Johnny Jump Up Appleseed dance. Oh, okay. Johnny Jump Way up. Get them apples. And he put them in his pocket. Put them in his pocket. Jump up there. Put them in his pocket. Now, if y'all want to join me in this, get some of that aerobic blood flowing. Because we're going to eat all them fritters. We're going to need it. I promise you. Well, folks, so easy to put together. So good. You make them at breakfast time, supper time, dinner time. Any time is the right time for fritter time. Yes, it is. Hear that? I can hear old Santa Claus off there in the Denison. Got them reindeer. He is getting closer, folks. It is time to shop for Christmas, and we got a lot of stuff going on the website. Check it out. There's a lot of stuff there, but also that new smoker. Remember it? It is there. So, folks, we'll be in Elko, Nevada, the last week of January, first part of February. Check that out on the website. Cowboy Portrait Gathering, but we got two cooking workshops. But, hey... It's a great time of the year, it is. I love Christmas, I love the holidays, loving to be able to cook for the people I love, and that is that woman behind the camera. Shan, I love you so much. Now remember, as always, and it is with great privilege that I do, I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag flying over camp. God bless you and we won't forget you, we won't. To the rest of you, come on in here, come on. Get close, we're gonna eat. Ah, gotta squeeze you extra hard, that way make more room for them fritters, it is. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the best apple fritter fireball trail. I don't like to overcrowd the boat, so let me move him over a little. It flies right on my eyeball. I'm gonna have another bite. Up there, but also that new smoker, remember it? It is there. <coughs> the sun got me. Oh my gosh, I tried to hold it off, but I couldn't do it. 
Yeah, you never know when one of them northers will blow in and it might be like down below zero and you'd be horseback out there looking for a yearling. You'd be thinking to yourself, man, I wished I had a fire. And just so happened you had one in your pocket. You did. So you get off and you use a match and you build a fire with it. It'll keep you warm, uh-huh.